In this lesson, we're going to walk through actually creating a Hadoop cluster in the Windows Azure platform. Microsoft's distribution of Hadoop is called HD Insight, and the clusters that we create within Azure are actually clusters of VMs that are created on the Azure platform. So to create the cluster, the first thing we need to do is create a storage account where the cluster's data will be stored, meaning its VM files and, and so on. So I'll manually create a new storage account for this. The requirement is that the storage account is created in the same data center where the HD Insight cluster will exist. And that data center is, in my case, going to be Northern Europe. To create a storage account, you just need to create a URL for it. That URL needs to be unique within the core.windows.net domain. And as you try it, the form will tell you whether you're picking something unique or not. When I get the green check, I know I have a unique name. I've chosen the right data center. And then I simply click the checkbox to create the storage account. And that'll take just a few minutes to create. And once that's created, I can see that I have a green check and the status is online. So again, the storage account is simply a container where the VMs that make up my cluster will be stored. And I can also use that to store other kinds of information that I'll later analyze using Hadoop. So next I click on the HD Insight section and I can see I don't have any clusters right now so I can go ahead and create one. And as I click the next button to create the cluster, I'm going to use the Quick Create. I'm going to try my name again as a base for this URL and that's accepted. The cluster size, I can choose how many nodes I want. So I'm going to choose the lowest level four nodes. Next I need to specify the password for the cluster administrator. You notice there are some requirements that the field must contain 10 letters and cannot contain certain things, must contain other things. So I just need to create passwords that meet these requirements. And last, I choose the storage account that I created in the last step, and that's where this cluster's data will be placed as it's created. When all those entries look good, I just click Create HD Insight Cluster. Then I just need to wait until the Azure platform creates the cluster within my storage account. I can see that the cluster is going to be created in Northern Europe, just as my storage account was. So now Azure has finished deploying these VMs. This took about 20 minutes or so in my case. And the cluster is running. I can actually click into this and look at the dashboard and see kind of what's going on in the cluster. And so far, not much. I can see I have 24 cores available to my Hadoop processes. And if I look at monitor, you know, later on as we start to use this, there will be more going on here. But right now we haven't done a thing, so it's really not doing anything. So just to check out that this cluster is actually working, there are a couple things we can do with it. The first is to connect to it. The second is manage the cluster. So let's just click the manage the cluster button. And what that will do is connect over the Internet. And I can see things like if the cluster is active, I can monitor it, look at job history, samples, etc. Remember that underlying this cluster is actually a series of Windows VMs that are running HD Insight. If I want to connect to the name node, which is kind of like the head node of this cluster, I can click on Remote Desktop and then open that RDP file. Approve these warnings. And then you can see I'm really just logging into a Windows 2008 R2 server. put in my password, and I'll get to a Windows desktop. And then later, as we submit jobs to the Hadoop cluster, this is actually going to be the name node that is controlling the process, and it will farm out jobs to the other three VMs that are part of the cluster. And that's it. That's really the process for creating a Hadoop cluster in Azure. You can see it's really simple and very easy to do. You don't have to deploy the VMs yourself. You can just use this console to do all the jobs for you and get right to implementing Hadoop solutions.